TPLO is indicated for stabilization of the cranial cruciate ligament deficient stifle joint in dogs and cats. Obtain two view radiographs of the affected leg. It is important to get true mediolateral and caudocranial views. For the mediolateral view, the tarsus and femur are placed at approximately 90 degree angles to the tibia, with the beam centered at the proximal third of the tibia. The caudocranial view must also be well positioned, as this image is used to screen for angular and torsional deformities of the limb that might need to be corrected during the procedure. The mediolateral radiograph will be used to measure the tibial plateau angle, or TPA. Identify the cranial and caudal articular margins of the tibial plateau on the proximal tibial articular surface and place points at these locations. Connect these two points with a line to define the proximal tibial joint reference line, or tibial plateau axis. The next step is to define the tibial mechanical axis. Place a point dividing the intercondylar tubercles above the tibial eminence. This is the proximal tibial mechanical axis point. Place a second point in the center of rotation of the talus. This is the distal tibial mechanical axis point. Finding the geometric center of the arcs defined by the talar ridges aids in identification of the correct location. Connect the proximal tibial mechanical axis point to the distal tibial mechanical axis point with a line to define the tibial mechanical axis. Draw a line perpendicular to the tibial mechanical axis at the intersection of the proximal tibial joint reference line and the tibial mechanical axis. The tibial plateau angle, TPA, is the angle formed by the line perpendicular to the tibial mechanical axis and the proximal tibial joint reference line. In this case, the TPA measured 32 degrees. Pre-plan the surgery to determine the position and size or radius of the osteotomy. The radius of the osteotomy is the same as the size of the saw blade. The center of the osteotomy is initially located on the tibial mechanical axis at the point dividing the intercondylar tubercles, proximal tibial mechanical axis point. The position of the osteotomy can be moved distally along the tibial mechanical axis down to the intersection of the proximal tibial joint reference line and the tibial mechanical axis. Adjustments of the osteotomy position between these two locations and the radius of the osteotomy can be used to optimize the size and shape of the tibial tuberosity cranial to the osteotomy. In a typical retriever-sized patient, planning begins with a 24 mm radius osteotomy template. Center the osteotomy at the point dividing the intercondylar tubercles, proximal tibial mechanical axis point. Evaluate the osteotomy size by ensuring that the osteotomy avoids the articular surface and tibial attachment of the cranial cruciate ligament. In a typical large breed, the tibial tuberosity should be a minimum of 10 millimeters wide between the patellar tendon attachment and the osteotomy, and there should be adequate room to place the appropriate bone plate on the tibial plateau segment. Check various larger and smaller osteotomy radii, or sizes, to identify the most suitable size. Once the size and position of the osteotomy have been determined, they can be defined and transferred to surgery by measuring linear distances from anatomic reference points. These measurements will be transferred to the tibia during surgery to aid in correct intraoperative osteotomy location. Draw a line from the patellar tendon attachment point perpendicular to the cranial border of the tibia, tibial crest, caudally to the osteotomy. The length of this line is referred to as D1. Measure this distance on the radiographic image so it can be used in the procedure. 
draw a line from the patellar tendon attachment point along the cranial proximal border of the tibia to the point that the osteotomy template intersects with the edge of the bone. The length of this line is referred to as D2. Measure this distance on the radiographic image so it can be used in the procedure. Draw a line from the caudal articular surface near the location of the proximal jig pin to the point that the osteotomy template intersects with the caudal edge of the medial aspect of the tibia. The length of this line is referred to as D3. Measure this distance on the radiographic image. During surgery, the D1, D2, and D3 distances will be identified and used to position the osteotomy saw blade on the tibia, ensuring accurate osteotomy position. The TPLO rotation chart is used to determine the cord length in millimeters that is needed to produce the necessary tibial plateau segment rotation to create a five degree post-operative TPA. The chart correlates saw blade size, radius, and preoperative tibial plateau angle. The intersection of the saw blade size row and the preoperative TPA column yields the cord length rotation distance in millimeters. In this procedure, a 32 degree TPA was measured and a 24 millimeter saw blade has been selected. The intersection of these two measurements yields a cord length of 11.1 millimeters. Place the patient in dorsal recumbency with the operated limb near the end of the table. A surgical vacuum bag and tape can be used to hold the patient in a secure position. This position allows the surgeon to evaluate limb alignment in a cranial to caudal perspective and to perform the surgical procedure with the limb held up off the table. In this orientation, the osteotomy will be performed with the saw blade in a horizontal orientation. During the procedure, it is critical that the proximal jig pin be inserted parallel to the articular surface and frontal plane and perpendicular to the patellar tendon. These two angles, parallel and perpendicular, refer to a single correct orientation of the jig pin. The correct jig pin location as seen from the lateral view. Alternatively, the limb can be placed on the surgical table and the osteotomy performed with the saw held in a vertical orientation. The following instruments and implants will be used in the TPLO procedure. The 3.5 mm universal drill guide can be used to drill holes for conventional screws in either a neutral or load position. A drill hole in load, also known as compression position, is created by placing the universal drill guide in an eccentric position within the plate hole away from the osteotomy. A drill hole in a neutral position is created by placing the universal drill guide in the eccentric position and then pressing the drill guide into the hole, which will shift the drill guide into the neutral position within the center of the plate hole. The small battery drive is used to drill holes for screws, to place K-wires, pins, and locking screws, and to perform the osteotomy, depending on the attachment used. With the selector switch in the on mode, depressing the lower trigger activates the drive in forward at variable speeds. Depressing the upper trigger activates reverse mode. Once the upper trigger is depressed, the lower trigger activates the drive in reverse at variable speeds. Putting the selector switch in the center position activates oscillation mode. With the selector switch in the oscillation mode, depressing the lower trigger activates the drive in forward at variable speeds. Depressing the upper trigger activates oscillating mode. Once the upper trigger is depressed, the lower trigger activates the drive in oscillation at variable speeds. When using a sagittal or oscillating saw adapter, forward mode is used as the adapter creates the oscillation. The large oscillating saw attachment is used with the small battery drive to perform the osteotomy in the TPLO procedure. After attaching the oscillating saw attachment, it is important to twist the locking ring into the lock position 
to attach the K-wire drive, align the K-wire handle with the handle of the small battery driver and push to snap into place. Before inserting a K-wire, ensure the correct setting is selected based on the size of the K-wire being used. Pin diameters for each selection are shown on the attachment. When using the K-wire drive, it is important to pull back on the clutch for the attachment to adequately grip the K-wire before activating the driver. This is best performed with the lower two fingers, leaving the index and middle finger available to operate the triggers. Threaded locking drill guides are used when placing locking screws. The threaded locking drill guide is screwed into the plate and guides the drill bit in the correct direction to ensure that the locking head screw will engage, thread into, the plate correctly. The TPLO plate is anatomically contoured to match the medial aspect of the proximal tibia of the dog. Locking screws eliminate the need for precise contouring of the head of the plate. The 3.5 mm Depew Synthes TPLO plate is designed with three distinct screw hole technologies to accommodate several screw application modalities. Along its shaft are two dynamic compression plate DCP holes separated by one central locking compression plate LCP combi hole. In its head are three stacked combi holes. The DCP holes accept only cortex screws. All combi holes accept either cortex or locking screws. The standard TPLO jig helps maintain stability of the bone segments and limb alignment and works with the saw guide to facilitate osteotomy placement. The saw guide can attach to any of the four positions in the jig arm and the jig pin can fit into any of the three slots in the guide, ensuring maximum versatility in osteotomy positioning. The jig arm screws can also be loosened to allow further adjustment of the jig arm and attached saw guide. Prior to placing the jig, ensure that the jig pin screws are retracted sufficiently to allow easy passage of the pin through the jig pin hole. The guide is compatible with 3.0 mm end threaded or smooth pins. Make a medial approach to the proximal tibia and stifle joint. Incise the skin and underlying fascia on the same line. Incise the joint capsule and luxate the patella laterally to expose the stifle joint. Extend the incision distally as needed to obtain the necessary exposure. Evaluate and treat the cranial cruciate ligament and medial meniscus as indicated. Close the joint capsule with 2O or 3O PDS or PDS Plus a suture that offers extended tissue support for slower healing tissues. In preparation for the osteotomy, release the fascia from the medial surface of the tibia and elevate the fascia with the goal of having it remain as a single sheet. Identify the medial collateral ligament. Make an incision directly behind the medial collateral ligament through the popliteal muscle and periosteum onto the bone. Connect this incision to the previous incision distally. Subperiosteally, elevate the popliteus muscle from the medial surface of the tibia. Continue elevation caudal to the tibia, ensuring that the dissection is subperiosteal. Avoid the cranial tibial artery located just caudal to the caudolateral aspect of the tibia. Make a 1.5 to 2 centimeter incision in the fascia 
overlying the cranial tibial muscle at about the midpoint of the cranial border of the tibia, or tibial crest, avoiding cutting into the cranial tibial muscle. Elevate the cranial tibial muscle from the craniolateral surface of the tibia. Place your index finger under the cranial tibial muscle and palpate the periosteal elevator placed caudal to the tibia. If the dissection is complete, you will be able to feel the elevator with your finger at the caudolateral aspect of the tibia with no soft tissue remaining on the bone in this location. This ensures that the cranial tibial artery has been elevated with the adjacent soft tissues away from the caudolateral aspect of the tibia. Saline moistened sponges are partially inserted beneath the cranial, tibial, and popliteal muscles to protect the soft tissue during the osteotomy. The ends of the sponges are left exposed to facilitate removal after the osteotomy. The articular surface must be identified for proper jig placement. Walk, insert and withdraw a 25 gauge needle proximally along the medial collateral ligament until it enters the joint. Leave the needle in place as a reference marker for the joint location. Place another 25 gauge needle into the joint about one to one and a half centimeters cranial to the first needle. These two needles define the tibial articular surface. Place a 3.0 millimeter K wire through the proximal jig pin hole in the arm of the jig. The pin tip is positioned about 3 to 4 millimeters distal to the joint surface and behind the medial collateral ligament. As the jig pin is brought into alignment, the medial collateral ligament will be pushed slightly cranially out of the path of the pin. This maneuver ensures that the jig pin is placed as cranial as possible without piercing the medial collateral ligament. Insert the proximal jig pin parallel to the articular surface and frontal plane of the tibia and perpendicular to the patellar tendon. Apply saline during jig pin insertion. With the proper alignment, the body of the jig will be parallel to the long axis of the tibia and the articulation of the distal jig arm is parallel to the plane of motion of the hock joint. Verify that the pin is in the correct alignment by looking down at the cranial aspect of the tibia and ensuring that the pin is placed perpendicular to the patellar tendon. This ensures that the jig body is parallel to the tibia. Make a 0.5 to 1 centimeter incision 2 to 3 centimeters proximal to the talocrural joint, where the distal jig pin will be inserted. Insert another 3.0 millimeter pin through the distal jig pin hole in the arm of the jig. Ensure the pin is parallel to the proximal jig pin in the frontal and sagittal planes. During distal jig pin insertion, monitor the distal jig pin alignment in one plane while an assistant monitors in the other plane. Once the correct alignment is verified, Insert the jig pin through the medial cortex and into, but not through, the lateral cortex. Continuously monitor the insertion angle and adjust as needed during jig pin insertion. The jig will articulate freely on the pins with correct, parallel, alignment of the jig pins. Slide the jig down the pins until the proximal jig arm is against the medial aspect of the leg. Ensure that the jig body remains perpendicular to the pins during this maneuver. Tighten the proximal and distal hinge screws with a 2.5 mm hex screwdriver to secure the jig. Tighten the jig arm knobs. Cut the proximal jig pin, leaving about 6 to 8 mm protruding above the jig arm to provide adequate clearance for the saw blade. Transfer the preoperative plan to the patient by making a mark with a cautery pen. Distance D1 from the patellar tendon attachment at the tibial tuberosity. Make a second mark distance D2 from the patellar tendon attachment on the cranial proximal border of the tibia at the point that the osteotomy will exit the bone. Place a 25 gauge needle in the joint proximal to the proximal jig pin and make a mark on the caudomedial tibial cortex 
distance D3 from the needle, denoting the location of the osteotomy exit from the caudal aspect of the tibia. Attach a saw guide matching the radius of the saw blade to the proximal jig arm. Select the optimal position for the saw guide by evaluating the alignment of the edge of the saw guide with the marks placed at distances D1, D2, and D3, accounting for the thickness of the blade. It is important that the saw is parallel to the distal jig pin when making this assessment. Position the saw blade against the saw guide and align such that the axis of the saw is parallel to the distal jig pin. Verify that the outer surface of the saw blade intersects marks D1, D2, and D3 with the saw in correct alignment. If the osteotomy position is not correct, the saw guide position should be adjusted. Rotating the small battery drive alternately clockwise and counterclockwise will ensure that the blade cuts freely and that the blade exits the bone completely at the cranial and caudal ends of the osteotomy. After cutting halfway through the tibia, remove the saw guide. Place a mark on the tibial plateau segment along the cranial aspect of the osteotomy with a small osteotome and small mallet. The mark can be highlighted with electrocautery. Make a second mark on the tibial plateau segment the appropriate cord length from the first mark based on the preoperative plan. Transfer the second mark across the osteotomy in a radial fashion. The mark is transferred across the osteotomy rather than measured diagonally, since diagonal measurement results in a measurement error approximately equal to the width of the osteotomy and underestimation of the appropriate cord length. Complete the osteotomy, cutting completely through the bone. Insert a 3.0 millimeter pin, or K-wire, known as the rotation pin, into the tibial plateau segment, which will be used as a handle. Insert into the proximal bone fragment at an oblique angle, above the level of the patellar tendon attachment, caudal to the osteotomy. Orient the pin to avoid the articular surface in osteotomy and aim just distal to the tip of the proximal jig pin laterally while ensuring penetration into the lateral or caudolateral tibial cortex. The rotation pin does not need to fully exit the cortex, but must be stable enough to rotate the plateau segment. Remove at least the caudal gauze prior to rotation. Using the rotation pin, rotate the proximal bone segment until the rotation marks are aligned. A small step of one to two millimeters should be evident between the proximal and distal bone segments with the cortex of the distal bone segment medial to the proximal bone segment. Secure the tibial plateau segment in the rotated position by inserting a 1.6 millimeter K wire through the tibia proximal to the tibial tuberosity into the tibial plateau segment. The K-wire insertion point is proximolateral to the patellar tendon insertion, approximately halfway between the tendon attachment and the proximal cut edge of the tibia. Aim the K-wire such that it exits the tibial plateau segment on the caudomedial cortex distal to the entrance point of the proximal jig pin. Remove the 3.0 millimeter rotation pin. Apply a large pointed reduction forceps with one jaw secured around the proximal jig pin and the point of the other centered on the cranial border of the tibia. Compress the tibial plateau segment to the distal tibial segment with the reduction forceps. Verify that the alignment marks are still lined up and that the small 1 to 2 millimeter step remains at the medial cortex. Application of the large pointed reduction forceps applies cranial compression and provides additional stability of the osteotomy.
Place the TPLO bone plate in position. The best fit position is typically such that the caudal edge of the bone plate is parallel to the caudal tibial cortex and the proximal hole is even with or slightly distal to the proximal jig pin. However, this is dependent on the location of the jig pin and osteotomy. Slight variations from the typical plate position might be necessary to accommodate local anatomy. Using the universal drill guide, drill a 2.5 mm hole in the proximal hole in the shaft of the plate in a neutral position. Measure the depth and insert a 3.5 mm cortical bone screw. Ensure that the plate is pushed proximally against this screw head when tightened to maximize the amount of space left within the screw hole for dynamic compression to occur later. Tighten the screw snug enough to secure the plate to the bone, but not fully tight. Using the universal drill guide, drill a 2.5 mm hole in the distal hole in the shaft of the plate in a load position. Measure the depth and insert a 3.5 mm cortical bone screw until it is one half to one turn away from contacting the bone plate. When placing the first two screws in the proximal head of the plate, the most easily accessible plate holes should be selected, avoiding the jig and holding K-wire. If necessary, the jig arms can be articulated to gain access to the plate holes. Ideally, the jig should remain in place until at least two screws have been inserted into the proximal portion of the bone plate. Insert a threaded locking drill guide in the proximal head of the plate. A drill bit inserted into a threaded drill guide can be useful to identify the trajectory of the drill hole. While stabilizing the plate with index finger and thumb, rotating the head of the plate caudally away from the osteotomy can be done to generate cranial compression. Drill the hole using a 2.8 millimeter drill bit. Measure the depth and insert a 3.5 mm locking bone screw. Locking screws will be hand tightened after all are placed. Insert a threaded locking drill guide in another proximal plate hole. Select another plate hole by identifying the position of the 1.6 mm holding K wire and choose a plate hole that is not obstructed by the K wire. Drill a hole using a 2.8 mm drill bit, measure the depth, and insert a second 3.5 mm locking bone screw. Remove the large pointed reduction forceps and the holding pin. Tighten the distal cortical screw until it is snug. Slightly loosen the proximal cortical screw and further tighten the distal screw. Retighten the proximal screw. This sequence provides axial compression of the bone plate, compressing the proximal tibial plateau segment to the distal tibial segment. Insert the remaining proximal screw. Drill a hole using a 2.8 mm drill bit, measure the depth, and insert a 3.5 mm locking bone screw. Using the universal drill guide, drill a 2.5 mm hole in the center hole in the shaft of the plate in a load position in the non-locking portion of the combi hole. Measure the depth and insert a 3.5 mm cortical bone screw and tighten. Slightly loosen the proximal screw in the shaft of the plate. Alternately tighten the distal two screws to compress the osteotomy. Hand tighten the proximal locking screws. Loosen the jig pin screws and jig arm knobs and remove the jig. Remove the jig pins.
close the fascia by using zero PDS or PDS plus in a simple continuous pattern. Flexion of the stifle can be used to reduce tension on the fascia, facilitating closure. Close the subcutaneous tissue with 2O PDS or PDS Plus in a simple continuous pattern. Perform a subcuticular closure with 3O Monocryl or Monocryl Plus in a simple continuous pattern to oppose the skin edges. Close the skin with 3O Ethylon in an interrupted cruciate pattern. The soft tissue closure is complete. Post-operative radiographs are assessed to verify osteotomy position, implant position, and limb alignment.